not as comfortable as it might look, but it is nice. What do you think of my throne of boxes? Pretty awesome, isn't it? Matter of fact, I don't even know what all these are, but if you look really closely, you might even find some machines that aren't even released until February and March. If there's one thing we don't have, that is a shortage of boxes here in the studio, a never ending supply. So we are starting a brand new series here on the channel where we're gonna be opening up these boxes and looking for things that are fun and interesting. Stick around, let's get started. All right, so Mrs. LM is here and she's got a stack of boxes over there. I honestly don't know what's in them. So Mrs. LM, what's our first box? What do you got? I have no idea. You don't know? Yep. Oh, it's California. I don't know. Let's find out. A plain brown box. What is this? I have no idea. A clear plastic box? Oh, no. What is it? I don't know. Oh, I almost thought it was E3D for a moment. I have, I have no clue, honestly. Greasy. Was there a label? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is the Ibos Artemis Extruder. This has been here for quite some time, I think. Um, anyway, this is a super lightweight extruder designed for high-speed 3D printing by Ibos. Um, I believe it's still on pre-order um, at the time that we're recording this. It's been here probably in the studio for quite some time, but it weighs about 105 grams. It really excels. Um, it just anything high speed, even with TPU uh, filaments, so flexible filaments. Fantastically uh, engineered uh, extruder. It's uh, see-through, so you can actually see the filament running through it. And it uh, doesn't really require much configuration in order to deploy it on any printer. But uh, definitely IBOS here labeled here on the clear, on the clear uh, acrylic or plastic. And then of course on the motor it's labeled as an IBOS stepper motor. Yeah, but we'll have some interesting content coming up uh, with this shortly. We'll have to throw this on a machine and uh, and get it uh, and get it working for you. All right, what do you got? Do we know what this is? No. Surprise. Let's see what we got. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, these are, if you look really closely here, these are nickel strips and uh, we are going to do some electroplating here on the show on some 3d prints and uh, we ordered this quite some time ago and i think maybe we just misplaced it mrs lm what did, what did we pay for this five dollars and 49 cents what are nickels made of i don't think they're made of nickel it doesn't feel like a lot of nickels to be five dollars and 49 cents um anyway but i don't know five dollars and 49 cents is a bad that's quite that's quite a bit we're gonna be doing some fun electroplating content. Uh, we're gonna be dropping this in some distilled vinegar and uh, hitting it with the electrical charge, making stuff really shiny. All right, Mrs. LM, what's next? What do we got? Well, I can see what this is. Is this how it was shipped, really? Like that? And it made it, it survived? Where'd it come from? It came from outside the country, it came through California again. Oh. Called the Grat Kit Firefly. Now I don't use filament dryer boxes a lot. We only use them on nylons and things like that. Um, but oops. Oh, it's cute. Huh? That is kind of cute, huh? Your spindle. Oh, that's interesting. Um, you look really close there on the inside of that. Um, you see the thermistor just laying in there on the bottom. I'm assuming that that's what that is. Maybe maybe that's not supposed to be above. Maybe that's supposed to be tucked under that metal plate and just shipping did that. I mean, I, I suppose that's I suppose that's possible. Anyway, um, what do we do? I'm gonna I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna tuck it under that. I just tucked it under it. It probably just got rattled around shipping. All right, so um, let me get a spool of filament. Let's uh, let's plug this in. Do we? We didn't order this. Obviously, this was sent over here. I 
I wouldn't be ordering filament dryer boxes. Found it. All right, got it. All right, little plug-in, got a beep. All right, that's what, oh, what is going on? We got RGB. It's beeping at me. We have RGB. So, what do we got? We got a disco going on here. Okay, so this is just a one kilogram spool of uh, polymaker filament. We close the lid here. Um, we got a peel. Okay, interesting. Different modes. Plus minus on temperature. 70C. A plus or minus time. It's got, okay, we're running. 3,500 RPMs for the fan. It's got PLA, PLA plus, PTG, ABS, polycarbonate, PIPs, TPU, and a DIY1 and DIY2 slot. Those are going to be custom slots, but that's pretty interesting. Oh, here it goes. So it's set for 70C. It's, it's now running. It's showing 47% humidity is actually what it's showing in it, which is actually really high. Um, but at 22.9C, it's going up. So it's showing us our temperature readout for the, for the heater. 23.1, 23.2, it's going up. 47% humidity. 4,980 RPMs, showing about seven hours and 58 minutes uh, remaining. I don't know, it's kind of compact, doesn't weigh very much. Um, it has a couple of holes. It looks like we have a vent hole on the top back. That's important for letting humidity uh, out, like letting the moisture out uh, when it's heating the filament. I think there was a company, what, a couple of years ago? I don't want to say what company it was. Um, I just don't remember, I don't want to say the wrong one. Um, but they ultimately had a, a filament dryer and they didn't put any vents in the top. And so people were having an issue with condensation collecting or moisture collecting on the inside of the filament dryer. So that that's not good. Here on the back, you can see that there is a vent here to let that out. And of course, um, also there is a PTFE, um, or I'm sorry, there is a, a gasket here that I'm assuming is that for pass through? Yeah, so it is. Ah, I can smell that filament. Does it know when it's open? I think it beeped at me, right? Did it beep when it was open? So it knows when it's open? Anyway, it has a gasket on the back so you can pass the filament out um, in print from the box uh, while it's drying. Does it know when it's being tipped? Maybe that's why it's beeping. Yeah. Ah, uh, good, smart, right? That's a, that's a smart feature. So it knows when it's, yep, it shuts off. It shuts off when it's being tipped over, that's important. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll include this in some upcoming content. Uh, what we like to do is whenever we're filming uh, for a printer or we're filming, filming for another project, um, if we have something like this, um, we'll throw it into the video and, and make sure that you guys can see how it works and. Um, if it turns out it's good, then uh, we'll recommend it. All right, Mrs. LM, what do we got? What's next? All right, what do we have? Something international from China. Shen, Shantou, Shantou. It's a happy box, very colorful. Um, I have no way to get into this thing. It is completely covered in tape. That's not, that's not a bag, that is just, the whole thing is covered in tape. Okay, what do we got? Oh, resin. Ming Chang Zhang is what it says. Uh, standard light resin, gray, one kilogram bottle. Rigid resin, 8K. And the brand says Antinsky since 2018. Oh, that's a big old bottle of resin. It was just packed in there just like that. That one packed a little bit better, right? It's important to, if you're gonna pack resin, to put it in bubble wrap. Standard light resin gray, one kilogram. And then there's Chinese, which I do not read. Standard light resin gray, one kilogram, especially designed by JZCX. Antinsky.com, so we'll have the link on the screen and in the description. And we'll, we'll have to do something with this. I guess, um, matter of fact, we do have the Halo Mage Pro 8K. And then I think we have another resin printer um, that's not, I don't know where it's at exactly. I just know we have a resin printer here that was sent. Um, it just hasn't been unboxed yet. So when we're going through these boxes, we'll find it probably. But I don't know what kind of printer that was. But this is 8K resin. So this could be from them, um, or this could be just something that was randomly sent to the channel. Okay, Mrs. LM, what do you got? 
<laughs> I wasn't ready. I don't know what this is, Mrs. LM. Ah, it's a printer kit. Printer kit, printer kit, printer kit. Wait a minute. Did did we order this or did this just show up? I think we ordered that. Let's take a look at it and see. All right, so we have a little socket wrench here. Kind of solid, kind of nice. We got a set of needles, right? So these come in handy. Matter of fact, uh, one of our other videos that we've done on the channel, we talk about having needles. That's kind of important. Um, we have a couple of uh, brass brushes. Um, it looks like a couple set of tweezers. I mean, we all we all know how tweezers work, right? I mean, they're they're not bad. I mean, they're they're cheap. They're, I mean, they're they're just folded steel. Okay, so we got a couple of sets of tweezers. We have a, a nozzle socket wrench. We have needles. Couple sets of needles right here, basically like like acupuncture needles, and it looks like these are actually in different ah different diameters. Interesting. Okay, so that is a lot of needles. Here, let me not poke myself. Uh, a lot of needles, different diameters. That's kind of nice. A little plug keeps those things safe for you. All right, and we have a couple of brushes. Um, all right, Mrs. LM. So I can't imagine that it doesn't feel like it's super expensive stuff. So, Miss Ellen, what do we pay for it? $9.99. So, $10. Yeah. Um, $10 for a couple of brushes, um, a nozzle socket wrench, two different sizes, some needles, a couple of those uh, wrenches, and a couple of tweezers. These are like three bucks each, aren't they? I think these are like brass brushes are like three bucks each. So, that's probably fair enough. We'll have a link uh, if you're interested in that in the description. All right, Mrs. Ellen, what do we have? What is next? That's a big box. Well, I can already tell you what this one is. Uh, let me guess, is this from Bamboo? And, and what does Bamboo sell? A lot of things. No. Printers and filament. That's what Bamboo sells. So no surprise. Filament. What do we got? Four, four boxes of filament. Four boxes. It looks like, is, is it all silk? Yep, here we go. Four boxes of silk PLA is what we have here. And we'll take a look at them. So we have dual color filaments here. We have um, Gilded Rose, Blue Hawaii, Neon City, and Midnight Blaze is what we have. I don't understand the reason for sealing filament boxes closed with tape, but. Gray spool, ooh, wow. Very, very good looking. Look at that. Wow. Look at that filament. That is absolutely gorgeous. That is a dual color. It looks like a purple and an orange. And this was called Gilded Rose. Um, yeah. Yeah, like a light purple and an orange. Um, and we'll get some awesome B-roll of these uh, these filaments here. Let's get the next one open. Okay, so this one is called Blue Hawaii, and this looks like it's a combination of blue and green. Is it pink? pink. Looks like purple. All right, so this is blue and green. This is pretty. So this one's called Blue Hawaii. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that combination of color. Ooh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Um, gorgeous filament. All right, next. So thanks, Bamboo, for sending this over. Um, we are in Studio A right now, and uh, the wall behind me... Oh, I didn't get the name of that. The wall behind me is a Polymaker filament wall, and uh, we're in Studio A. So Studio B is a Bamboo Lab uh, filament wall. So this right here is called Neon City, and this is a pink and a blue, I believe. Neon City. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that color combination there. Gorgeous filaments. These are all silks. Dual color silk filaments from Bamboo Lab. Midnight Blaze, and it is a blue and a red. And so what happens inside your 3D printer, imagine as it's extruding, uh, like think about it like toothpaste, two different colors coming out. Depending on the orientation of the model, as the print head is moving around, one side of the print will be one color, the other side of the print will be another color. Now the crazy thing about dual color filaments is, is it doesn't stay that way. For unknown reasons, um, and many companies have tried to figure out exactly what's, what's doing it, what's causing it, and some filament companies have done certain things with their filament to, to keep the filament uh, oriented the same way through the extruder. Um, it doesn't really work. The filament can twist, right? So as it's going through the extruder, sometimes it twists this way, that way, and you get these incredible fun kind of stripes and randomness in every single print. Um, so it's interesting. So this one is called Midnight Blaze. Take a look at that right there like a blue and a red, kind of pretty. All of Bamboo Lab spools are master spools for refills. So, and they have refills available on their website. You can go check those out. But anyway, we'll have links on the screen um, and in the description for these. Is that all? Yeah, I, that's it. I think that's it. That's all we have for today. So we have a ton more boxes to go through, probably another 40 or 50 boxes at least. So we'll try and uh, do another one of these shortly. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content and uh, anything that you saw, in the description below. We'll see you on the next one.